The Holy Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, Well, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can, can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Well, Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or, or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, well, How can these things be? Jesus answered, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I had told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one is ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may, may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. couple things going on in the readings. We have Abraham who's called to, to leave this, this resting place where he had set up a home. He called to, to go into a new area to seek God's understanding and will. And then we have Nicodemus who comes to Jesus in the night, late in the night, to ask questions about his faith and understanding. And also one other thing that is on my mind this weekend is that Aaliyah and our daughter Meridian drove down to San Diego to visit our friends that live down there and they'll be driving back at the end of the weekend. And with these contexts, I want to share a story about when I first, around the time I first met Aaliyah. This is a memory of God's second baptism with my hands. The second time I got to participate in a holy baptism. Now when I first met Aaliyah, I cried a lot more than I do these days. The main reason being that I was part of a ministry training called clinical pastoral education. It was a part of my master's degree program that required me to go into a hospital to learn how to be a chaplain in a hospital setting outside of my normal routine and day-to-day -day 
was called to be there for three months, every day for three months. To be on call at night time with the pager, to serve with other students who were learning, a small group of us who were training for ministry, ministry training, not unlike God's command for Abraham to pick up and move away from what was familiar and to go into a new setting in order to serve the Lord. And in my case, it was to serve as a chaplain in a hospital at Loma Linda University Medical Center. Last week I was talking, I mentioned that I, I picked up something from the dust down there in, in the deserts and it was during my time at Loma Linda University Medical Center that, that I breathed something in and, and it caused this, this, the coccidioid mycosis that I talked about last week that caused me to, to spit up blood from my lung and it, and it created these packets in my lung. It's around the same time as that happened to me that I was in this training for clinical pastoral education. I didn't realize the, the symptoms of that until months later because it, it was something that I breathed in and I didn't realize it was part of me until later on, until it found a home inside my lung, caused damage. But this story is about trusting God's ability to give life beyond death. It's about a time when baptism was a gift, not just to the one that was baptized, but also to those who were present for the baptism, for all of us there. This was 18 years ago. 18 years ago, I was the chaplain at the hospital in Loma Linda, at Loma Linda Medical Hospital. It was about 11.30 at night. And I got a call on the pager. How many of you remember pagers? Got a call on the pager, so I called back and there was a family that was in a car accident and they requested a chaplain. Well, they requested a Spanish-speaking chaplain And they requested a baptism at midnight, which didn't mean something good. Which meant to me that there was something serious that had happened in that car crash. Well, I could speak a little bit of Spanish. I had my years of Spanish in school. And so I took the staff elevator with a copy of the Lord's Prayer in Spanish in my left hand, and in my right I carried a bottle of water labeled by the hospital as pure water, said on there. The Spanish-speaking mother of the daughter and her daughter's best friend were so excited to be spending the weekend at their aunt's house the aunt of the daughter's house, out in the desert that they decided to leave Riverside early, I mean late that night, so that they could get there out in the desert before the morning. And they didn't wait for the light. Now the father and the brother of the mother and the daughter. The father and his brothers were the ones I had first seen out by the elevator. The brother explained to me in English that the father had been working late and had told his wife not to go. He had told his wife not to go late at night but to wait until the next morning. But they were so excited to go on this trip to their family's home. But she'd gone, so she went. And still in shock and anger when I arrived, the father was looking like this. 
I didn't know it had happened yet. The father hadn't even been in yet to see his wife or his daughter. His hands were fisted. His arms were crossed. Obviously holding back some massive emotions. And his arms and his brother, it seemed, were the only things holding, holding back this incredulous anger from just exploding out of this man. The nurse had warned me that the father was on the verge of acting out in rage. Eventually, a security guard that was called wasn't needed. Thank God. But I was glad he'd shown up. And so then I went from the hallway into a hospital room where I saw a woman shaking her bandaged head back and forth. Like inside she's crying, no, no, this can't be happening. The daughter's friend had died at the scene of the accident out there in the middle of the desert. Even before the helicopter had landed an hour before, I seen the mother and the daughter had suffered so much trauma that when the car had drifted off the road, when the mother fell asleep, when she fell asleep at the wheel and the car drifted off the side of the road, the daughter's brain showed no more signs of life. No more brain waves in the baby, the daughter. The mother wanted a minister to baptize her daughter. A daughter who would surely die within the next short hour. And they got me in the middle of the night. A few more relatives arrived, bursting instantly into grief. And so I went back out of the room, back down to where the father was, down the hallway to where the father was waiting in his rage and ready to let loose in Spanish in Spanish, he, he finally also told me that he, he also, he wanted his daughter baptized. And that he was finally ready to go in. His, his anger was lessening, but before we left the hallway, we all agreed that right then was not the time to go in there with anger, with blame and curses for his wife, his her daughter, his wife's daughter, was dying also. Their daughter. So the experience of grace finally came about because of this baptism. The father followed me into the room, still holding his arms, clutching his fists, he finally unclenched his fist to hold his daughter's hand during the baptism. And along with another family member, we led a series of Spanish prayers. And when our prayers were complete, finally the father and the mother finally embraced and wept together. The hard truth is that for life to go on, neither that father nor I nor any of us could just remain outside the room with our, with our, with our judgment and our anger and our hostility to what had happened. That wasn't going to bring the life back into the room. The hard truth is that for the life to go on, 
the journey of faith to go on requires us to move, to move out of our corners, to move out of our judgment and into an embrace and into a connection with one another as we experience the valleys of death in our lives. In today's Genesis story, Abraham is called on a spiritual journey. He's called from a city, from a city called Haran. Now the city name Haran means crossroads. Abraham is at a crossroads. He's, he's in, in, in the hallway waiting to know where to go next. Wondering if, if all that he's feeling is going to boil over or how it's going to resolve itself. Haran, which literally means crossroads. And that father was at the crossroads in that hospital hallway when I first arrived, clenching his fist, fomenting rage at God and at others. Some people try to remain there, try to remain in that anger, try and remain because it gives them a strength of some sort. It, it gives them a, a, a meaning for their lives if they have that anger. But it doesn't bring the life, the blessing. It brings the curse the cursing at one another. It brings the anger and, and the blame and the hurt all back. Sure, we try and stay there, but we know that to live, to be born again in this way, this, to, to go through death and to still, still find life in the midst of a horrible death. Some people have remained in that hallway of the hospital, contesting wills, angry at healthcare workers for years on end. They couldn't fix them, and the doctor said this. It's the doctor's angry at someone and never really dealing with the problem of death. Their daughter was dying in their arms. And so it is the Spirit that gives us life, the Holy Spirit that comes as our only hope when facing death. Jesus comes not with clenched fists ready to, to curse us, to condemn us. The Gospel tells us that Jesus comes not with clenched fists, but with his arms open ready to hold our hand again, ready to embrace us, ready to welcome us, ready to forgive us for bad choices, for hurtful actions, for mistakes and failings. And Jesus confronted senseless death, deaths, tragic desperation, not with, not with rage, not with anger at what caused this event, what causes death or hurt, but with loving arms wide open. And truly, this is the miracle of God. This is the miracle of God because this is so difficult for any of us to do ourselves when we feel hurt and pain and sudden loss in the midst of death. Baptism united this family together again. Baptism. Baptism reminded each of us there of our weakness before death. A weakness which only God can strengthen. 
only by God's grace, a grace that goes beyond our fears and our hurts and our angers, a grace that can help us to live again when everything has gone dark, when death has even taken the Son of God. A grace to resurrect this Son of God, the Son of Man, this grace to help us live even when death has entered into our lives and has, has, has changed everything about our lives. Like those parents I met, God's grace shows us how to unclench our fists and receive God's holy communion, to receive God's grace in our lives, to receive the gift of the Son of Man in our lives. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, or to condemn this mother for losing, for, for, for losing her daughter. Or the other child's life. God. God offered forgiveness and comfort instead. With arms wide open. And it was healing for all of us in that room. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Please rise and we'll sing Baptized in Water.